Hi, Doug Binks here with the Avoid Game Editor. So I've got a delete tool and it's said to be in a cube and of size one. I've got the Clyde on, not continuous, and I can make little holes in things. But when using a small precise tool like this at large distances, there can be a problem with the level of detail. So here I'm gonna make a, a hole far away. You can see that one, but as I make holes further away, you can see that they're no longer visible. So if I go to my options, you'll find that there's a level of detail change distance. And if I increase that, now you can see that the holes that I've made further away are now visible. However, the level of detail change distance, this LOD change distance does affect performance. The larger you make it, the less performance you'll have for a given system. So you may want to play with what is the sweet spot for you. Um, with that. Uh, you can also get higher performance by turning the light texture quality off or turning it to one of the lower levels. I find personally that uh, three gives the best performance in this. So I'm going to undo those holes I made and go back down here and I'm going to try and create something. So maybe I want to put in a, a large blue element. Maybe uh, make that uh, 8 big. Now this green tool is pretty bright here um, and I don't like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it less bright. So one of the settings that we have is the um, tool cursor intensity. So I turn that down to about 0.2. There I can see it. It's uh, showing up well and it's showing up well when it intersects as well which can be very useful for making sure that you have something which is aligned. Oh, that wasn't aligned. That is aligned. But um, it's not overly disturbing and not uh, impacting on what I'm seeing too much. So that tends to be about a, a good setting and will be the future default. Move those uh, box out of the way again by control zetting. Um, there is a section of tools that you can use up to uh, 10 different tools. These are basically tools that you can create yourself. All of the settings are saved between one and nine. Um, so you can have a different type of tool for each of these settings. Um, this was done originally so that you could use your keyboard to change the settings between uh, these much as you would, here we go, I'm using the keyboard now just to change settings, much as you would with say uh, a first person shooter change your weapon. Um, I'm not really using that too much at the moment, so we'll see how uh, that useful that proves. I think what I might need to do is add names as well as have the numbers there, so you could name a particular tool um, so that you could use it in the way that you like. One of the most useful things, though, is the material palette in terms of getting the colors that you want. So I'm going to show my material palette. Um, and if I put that, if I click on the top border, I can move that material palette around. If I click on the bottom border, I can make it smaller or bigger. So at 1080p, I can have all of that visible. And what we see here is these are the materials that I have currently got set in this particular, um, available in this particular environment. And down here, we have some of the settings for the, um, each material. And here we have the view of all of the materials. So I can select material there, and I can add it to my little tool palette up here. So it's available to me without bringing up the large material tool palette. But you can also add your own materials. So if I add materials, you'll find that there's two choices of new material. Um, I'm gonna call this, uh, I double click here, delete that, I'm gonna call this dark stuff. And rather than use this continuous color grid, which I might explain another time, I'm going to go with separate colors. So I'm going to in fact call this dark random stuff. The name doesn't mean anything other than giving you something that you can say. And this size, 4x4, four four, means I'll have 16 um, potential colors and they'll be uh, viewed arranged in a grid of 4x4. Four four. So I go OK to that. And now what I can do is I can select and change the materials. So here we'll see that all of them start out as white in this case. And if I select this by clicking here, I can change from manual entry of this code to RGB entry 
to hue, saturation, and value. So I'll, in this case, I'm gonna go for some saturation, turn the value down because I want something that was dark, and then I can select the hue for each of these colors. And we can go through and change, and select and change each of these um, to our will like that. Metallic is pretty much what it says. This means that um, if I increase this value, it gets more metallic, and if I decrease it, it gets less metallic. Um, this is a bit like specular. Basically, it's a single parameter which controls um, how much uh, reflection you get from a material and whether the color of the material is in the reflected light or in the diffuse um, light, because uh, non-metals, -met basically, the reflected light is the same as the light color, whereas the diffuse light is, is a different color. So what you can see there is metals show up as having the bottom part brighter than the top part, and diff diffuse materials, dielectric, show up as having the top part. And if you go halfway, you might see them a bit balanced out. Basically, the bottom half of these material colors that you select is the specular. And the smoothness controls um, uh, how wide the reflection is and also how much uh, value you have for the um, specular reflection as well. So making this in terms of how high the peaks are. So if you make this uh, very, very smooth and you make it very, very metallic, and I just will say, uh, take uh, the hue to something so I can see a bit of color, make it a bit saturated. This will be an extremely fake material. But here what I can do is apply that to the palette and I choose a sphere, remove this guy for a minute. Now we can see we've got something which is, uh, um, reflects the light in all directions. Pretty much everything has some uh, reflection in terms of Fresnel. But then I can, if I go back and uh, show the material palette, I can then edit that. Um, actually, let's make a cube of this as well. So I'm gonna take a cube, move that for a moment. Put a cube there, so you can see a cube is uh, only really giving us some sort of bluish reflection from the environment when we're at an angle, and I can see the, the sunlight reflected when I'm at the, the correct angle here. So we get a bit of that reflection going. I can now uh, take this material, let me show materials again, and I'll remove this tool palette. So now I've only got this material palette going. Now I can play around with these values and see the material uh, and what's happening. So if we change to a non-metallic, um, it goes to a very uh, dirt-like non-metallic thing where we're just seeing a diffuse color and we're seeing some uh, of the specular reflection when we're at short, small angles. This is a bit for now, obviously. And I can take that smoothness down, making it very, very rough, so we don't really see that to quite the same extent. And I can make it uh, uh, very metallic, um, but it's not so smooth. So now the specular highlight is uh, lower, but more spread out. Okay. And of course, uh, if we change the, the colors, we get different variations. So that was showing you how to make uh, simple materials and change uh, your materials to be whatever you want and also changing some of the settings to get uh, your environment easier to read. And that's it.